Grant Dania now. It's Grant Dania. The gold lady this year. Oh my god, it's Grant Dania. And our mom, Shazzy Dania. She's really crazy. It's all true. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shazzy Dania. Way. Um, way. 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 Yeah. <laughs> A way, huh? Three seasons in, still haven't mastered the art of what do we say first. Yeah, well, I wasn't quite sure if you were going to jump in, and then um, yeah, I was. Um, I was still looking at George's beautiful face. Hello, George. Hello, guys. I'm I'm loving lovers, legends, and a lunatic. So I think that should be a benchmark for where we start our podcast. As when we introduce people, it covers some ground. Okay. Yeah, like Are it's we- nice and broad, and it feels very inclusive. It's our entire audience. But when, as you might Lovers, know now. Lovers, lunatics and what? And l- losers. No. Legends. Legends. Yeah. Yeah. What, Good. If you don't know by now, if, you, if, you, if you're new to the show, you, we, look, we're not the most organised, um, but that's also, that's wherein lies the beauty. Yes, we haven't <laughs> been able to figure out who talks first and what we say when we do start the podcast. <laughs> But some of the best feedback we've we've got in recent times is from that episode. What did we call it? Oh, sorry, the one this is er, d- yeah. episode is crap. No, I can't remember, but it was about um, the episode that got really loose. Yeah, we were telling people not to listen to it, and um, the uh, horse lips on a penis episode. What? That one, <laughs> the most yes. talked about episode, I'd yeah, say. That's yes. that's right up there. Um, Actually, we had a couple of reviews about that um, about that particular podcast. Um, Horsing Around by L from Central West. Friday's episode was the best. You had me in stitches. I have been a loyal listener from season one and truly thank you both and George for the adult voices I can hear when hanging out with my three boys. P.S. Grant, don't be a prude. This content was better than horse lips on a penis for sure. (laughs) I'm not a prude. I look. I'm the first to go there, but however, it did. It got a little bit weird. Though, I didn't it? thought it that strange. maybe people. That's not what people signed up for. But I'm so glad that they have because that was a wild episode. It was pretty out there. What but, are we doing today? Uh so we've got some really great reviews. I think we have to read out one more. Grant. Off you go. Yeah. Well, you can read it if you want. Um. Well, there's our notification. Still going off, even though I've set the uh, do not disturb. We'll work that out by season four. This is from Dumbaz, <laughs> 1987. I can barely follow podcasts. I just really zone out. Hmm. Oh. Got a good start. <laughs> um, but this one I'm fully enthralled by. How can two people have so many hilarious stories? Um, I love listening and trying to follow your collective trains of thought. I really like trying to follow um, my wife's collective train <laughs> of thought as well. That's a fun game for all of us. Uh, and what about this one? Um, the actual best podcast I've ever heard. Holy smokes. Woo! Uh, this is Kaza Aaron. Ripley, who's Kaza. clearly high as a kite. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't get enough of this. You three have helped me feel better about life and myself. Keep doing more. I love them. I love you all. Oh, that oh, is so nice. That, so that is really beautiful. I've got to ask you guys, since our last episode where we had the cowgirl or cowboy psychic in. Cowgirl. She was a girl. Yeah, she's a girl. Good Georgie. listening, George. Yeah. Cowgirl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so did anything eventuate from that? Did you have any more signs appear? What was the go? Well, there haven't been any birds, I can tell you that, but uh, we did have a bit of a sign today, didn't we, Grant? Oh, yeah. I was like, like... Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, what was that sign? Oh, my <laughs> God. Are you kidding me? Was it what turned up in my feed? Yeah. Oh, all right. So you know how yeah. we're debating like, um, or, well, I was debating whether I should go motor racing and do go back and do some Targa Tasmania um, car rallying. Still sort of debating it. And then in my feed this morning was a clip from about four years ago, five maybe. It just popped up on his Instagram. So if you don't know what a feed is, it's like he, it, somebody had tagged him in a post that they put up Three days ago, I think, or four days ago. Yep. And it was of a psychic who appeared on Hughes's TV show. And I was there because I was like, I was on there like, should I go back to motor racing or not? And so Hughesy, to help me solve this problem, brought out this psychic who said, you're going to be fine. Go motor racing. You're all good. Don't, don't worry. You're not going to have an accident. You're definitely going to be a grandfather. It's, it's all good, bro. And I was like, wow. that is the sign that I needed. It's so yeah. bizarre. So this, so, so 
this guy, what's his name? Harry. Harry. Harry, Harry T. Harry T. Right? Is we'll a just psych- call him. psychic. Yeah, we'll give him a call. He he's posted this thing and tagged Grant on the same day, the same day that we have recorded the podcast. So nobody has any idea that we were discussing the things we were discussing in the podcast no. episode because that episode hasn't come out yet. That's confusing. But um, yeah. let's give him a call. Well, Harry yeah? Let's do it. Harry see, see what he says. This is just see if he become, still backs up his claim that I'm going to be A-OK. We've become like the psychic hotline, <laughs> haven't we? Psychic po- podcast. This, this won't be the whole episode, by the way, if you're wondering. Hello? Uh, is that you, Harry T? It's Grant Denyer here, my hey. friend. Hey, Grant. How are you going? I'm really well. I just want to let you know that we are currently recording. I hope that's okay. We're on our podcast right now, and it's a pleasure to have you with us. Are you well? Of course. That's so good to be with you. Oh, How's everyone going? Thank you, mate. Aww. Hi, Harry. Um, I'm hey. I'm Grant's wife, Shezzy. Hello. Um, so nice to sure to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to talk to you. And uh, and we've also got George here, who's joining us via Zoom. Um, hey, George. Harry, I push their buttons and do all that fun stuff. Nice to meet you, mate. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, sometimes it's good to push someone's buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Harry's cheeky like that. Now, um, now this is this is so out of the blue. You, mm. I, look, I sent you a message, mate, saying I saw the thing you posted um, just a couple right. of days ago, which was an old clip of you and I, mm-hmm. of me mm-hmm. debating whether I should go back to motorsport and you telling me everything's going to be A-OK. And you've posted yeah. that right at the time that I'm currently debating whether I should go and do Target Tasmania. Wow. Call me psychic. Call me psychic. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> because, because you know what? That that clip sort of resurfaced. Someone actually sent it to me. And then I was like, oh, my God, I remember that. So I thought it was a bit of fun, so I posted it. And then obviously when you messaged me that, I thought, how uncanny. Like it's so amazing that the universe works like that. And do you find that that sort of happens a, a lot? Because you sent me a message saying, isn't mm-hmm. that funny how these things happen? You said it in such yeah. a knowing way. It's story of my life, you know. These these sort of things that a lot of people probably see as supernatural, for me, is very natural. <laughs> so, ah. you know, it, it, it sort of happens in my world. And the great thing about it, though, is when people like, like you guys are also part of it. Because, you know, for me, it's very normal. But then when other people get to sort of say, oh, my God, hey, you know, I was just thinking of that, they see it for themselves as well. You know, it, it's really good. Is that because wow. there's other forces at play that are trying to steer us in the right direction? Definitely, definitely. Because, you know, we are sort of, you know, I mean, a lot of people might roll their eyes about this, but, you know, I know this for sure. You know, we are definitely looked over by guardian angels, you know, um, loved ones who have passed over, higher power. You know, the universe works in mysterious ways. We're not meant to know everything, but 100% certainty, there is a way to this madness. You know, there is definitely... Um, it's definitely orchestrated by what I think is pure love at the end of the day. Harry, yeah. when you all of a sudden have a chat with Grant, Chezzy and myself and we sort of bounce mm-hmm. off each other for a few minutes, do you mm-hmm. get a vibe from anybody up there or in the other universes trying to say something to us? Well, you know, I, I do get a sense of things when I talk to people. Whether I like it or not, I sort of always do. Sometimes I try to block it, but I always get a sense of things around people and about people. I think, Grant, um, when I met you, I think we were having a chat backstage about stuff as well. And because obviously I knew that I was coming on to here, I hope you don't mind that I did this. I mean, I've, I should have asked your permission. But um, I, I have a deck of cards that I created recently called the Energies of the Soul Oracle Cards. And I sort of laid them out just to sort of get a peek into your world. Is that okay or was that not okay? No, no, we're, we're an <laughs> open podcast it. here, mate. So whatever you find, right, feel free to just we've, openly declare it. We've just, okay. Harry, we've become like the psychic hotline because I think we should just oh. say that, um, that, that last week we recorded a podcast episode and we won't yeah. go into too much detail for you, but it's all kind of linked Linking together with with what no you're way. discussing right now, so we're no very way. interested. Yeah. We're okay. Believe- amazing. All right. What have you got? Well, okay. That makes me feel better because I laid these cards out and I thought, look, I'm going to leave them in front of me and I'll, I'll use them if you guys let me. And if you're not, I'll just pack them up. So basically, um, I I think this is about the two of you. Maybe this is about discussions that you guys have been having behind the scenes about things. But I want to let you know what cards have come out. Okay. And I want to explain them. Okay. So you, we pulled we pulled a good six cards. One is passion which came with the card conscience. Then we've got work and family. 
Then we've got protection and spirit world. So they're the six cards. So when I look at them as a whole, I would say that, Grant, your passion to get back into racing is sort of weighing on your conscience a little bit because you're thinking, look, I really am into this. I really want to do this. But then there's a part of you that's sort of scared to embark on that because obviously, you know, you're, you know, you, you have had near misses. Um, so I think it's sort of weighing on your conscience. So you guys might have had a discussion about this, but I actually can see here when I look at it as a whole that the work and life balance that you have, because that's staying in the middle work and family, that will always be the same. You'll never have that change. So, you know, obviously, you know, you're a workaholic, but you're also a familyholic as well. So that will always stay like that. And the protection card with the spirit world, I think is the best part of this because it means that you are looked after. We were talking about this actually just before I said this, um, yeah, you know, people who have passed over that will be watching over you. I actually think that both of you are thinking of people as I'm talking. I don't know. If, I mean, I, I'm just saying that. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. And because when, when I look at these two cards, I actually feel, I mean, do you mind if I say something? Like, can I go there or no? Is that all right? Go there. Go, for it. go there, yeah? brother. Okay, cool. Because, because, you know, while I'm talking, I just get this sense that the two of you are thinking of, people who have passed in your lives for different reasons. And it could be about something coming up. You know, I think that Grant, you definitely have an older man that's with you. It could be something to do with the month that we're in or there's a special occasion coming up that makes you think of him a lot. But I think that it could be like your grandfather. And I think there's something to do with this particular month and him. So maybe he's just more around you um, in April, you know, sort of Easterish time. There's something about the date that I think is a link with him. Um, does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. I used to spend all my Easter's with uh, with 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 my grandfather and grandmother. So Roy. Okay. R- yeah. So Easter's were uh, okay. were our thing. Wow. Okay. Well, the, okay, that makes sense because Easter's obviously coming up. So definitely around Easter, you would be thinking of him a lot. And um and uh, your, has your grandmother passed also? Yes. Because they they want you to know that they're together. And when it comes to Easter, they're still doing that tradition. So they see you with your family and they want you to know that they join. <laughs> so they definitely do that. And they, he, I don't know what this is, but they just gave me Anzac biscuits. Is that a thing? Did oh, someone make Anzac mate. biscuits or is that a thing? She made the best <laughs> Anzac biscuits on the Get face out. of the planet. Crunchy on the no outside, way. chewy on the inside. Really? Wow. No because one... get, get, get out of here because just then as I'm talking, she literally just gave me a plate of Anzac biscuits. I'm like, okay, well, clearly she's just made these for you. I mean, that, that's literally what she just did. And as I say that as well, I just want you to know, and I don't know what this is, um, but your wife, um, I don't know if sometimes you think you're a little bit psychic or if you sometimes get feelings because I'm seeing, I have this vision of you sort of looking up at the sky and sort of like talking to either someone or something. Like, I, I don't know what this is, but I feel like you have a connection and it has something to do with the night sky. So if you're ever at night looking out and whether it's the stars or the moon and you're actually looking up at the sky and you actually like are talking to people that you love, that you miss, I have to tell you that they can hear you because I can actually see you doing that. Is that something you do? Is that a thing? That is something I do. That's something I've been doing recently as well, a, a, a lot of. So, yes. How interesting. Well, there you go. So the people that you are <laughs> – the people that you're thinking of when you do that, especially if at the night time, I can see it. And um, Shezzy, you, you're connected with this as well. Mm-hmm. Is someone, do you, does anyone know someone who had, um, there's like a younger presence that's just come in and I feel like they might have had a cancerous condition because they feel young to have passed. Yes. And yeah. when I sort of feel this presence, it, it, it feels female, it feels young, it feels a cancerous condition, but I think it's something that, my head hurts. So I don't know. It's almost like a lightning bolt in my head. So it, it could have been something where if someone had a head pain before they died, but I think they were sick. So, um, yeah, I think I think there was a female. Well, I, I, this could be totally wrong, and I mean, I'm okay no, if I'm right, wrong. But, you're very much but on is, the is there something Is there something about farming with yeah. them, or did they farm or live on a farm? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. So this person who lived on a farm or was in farming, because I can see animals around them, I can see farming, um, very pretty young female. Um, I believe that there was a cancerous condition. It it could have actually been something that started off as one thing and then it became another. 
because she so it's almost like my head hurts, but it didn't begin like that. Does that make any sense? Yeah, That's she it. had. Uh, I just lost her friend this year. She um she had breast cancer and and um and it kind of did it go to the head? It did. Yeah, to a brain oh, brain tumor. That's it. Okay, this this person that you've just said, this is who it is. So were you thinking of them just like just before? You know how I said I, I was thinking of people. Yeah, okay, I was. <laughs> okay, because because that is crazy. Because as soon as we, we we were speaking with Grant and we got the grandma and the grandpa and the ancestors and all of that stuff in the day, then the the this young woman came through and it, it just clicked for me like jigsaw puzzles, almost like this is who you were thinking of when I was talking before. <laughs> and and um, wow, well she well, she must have been very young because when she came in. I, I don't know what this is as well, but you need to know that her hair has come back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she had beautiful hair. She had really long, gorgeous locks. She looked um, looked like a model. And the last wow. time she came over to our place, she um, she shaved it off because oh. it, it, she'd lost it and um, and then uh, had to have radiation. And, and she's rocking. It off and... She's rocking her long hair ring, and I can tell you that much. Woo. And you know what's interesting? She really loves you like a sister. Yeah. So I don't know how your the bond that you had, but she loved you like a sister. Because when when you say friends, she looks at you like you're like a sister. Were you the big sister? In fact, she said you're like the big sister. <laughs> I'm a lot older. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're older. <laughs> you're the big sister. Yeah, so very there much. There you so. go. There you go. Well, there you go. That that that's definitely confirmation. And what I love about this is, um, it's great for you guys to get this because for me this is normal stuff, right? Like it happens mm-hmm. to. I mean. You know, my whole life has been like this. But then when you guys experience it too, it's like it's nice to take away. You know, it's nice to take that away because, you know, the grandmother and grandfather around um, Grant and, and that's biscuits and, you know, Easter. And then your friend who, I mean, that's very sad that she was so young, but it's good to know that she's in a good place because she's definitely happy. Oh, she must is- have been a very bright person because she's full of life. Watch what will happen. Within the next three days, you'll get a sign from her. And it could be something where, again, you look outside and maybe like a star will twinkle or something will fall in front of you and you will think, oh, my God, that's her. <laughs> that's exactly what happened last night. And I, oh, my I God, did, no way. Yeah, and I did think of her. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Harry so for everyone Tate. listening, For everyone listening, I don't live with these people, so I don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know some of, um, some of those things that, um, oh, yeah, there's no, there's no way. way so. you, you could have known that. Yeah. That is extraordinary. Oh, um, there you go, guys. I, uh, it, this is like gone off on a tangent, <laughs> was, but um, seeing, as we're, <laughs> seeing as we're talking about her and she's, you yes. know, obviously her energy is with you, can I just ask, yes. um, she has a... Is it about her family? Are you going to ask something about her family? Yeah, I am. Did you know she heard your question before you said it? <laughs> that blew my mind because what just happened, and I'm so sorry to have cut you off, but as this, and this tends to happen, to, and I'm, I'm a Gemini, so I tend to talk a lot. So, you know, the, the, this, this person was talking to me as you were talking, so it's almost like you vanish, and she said, oh, she's going to ask about, about my family. So did, did she have a son? Yes. Yes. Are you going to ask something about the son? Yes. She wants you to still watch it, like be in the son's life. Okay. So it's it's almost like you. She still wants you to to protect him and to look over him and watch him, and she's doing that from her end. But she, you know what? She's a clever cookie because she doesn't trust a lot of people, and I like that when people don't trust people <laughs> because because I'm telling you now, she's my kind of person. Um, because you know when they when they sort of say this, it means that they're trusting only the the right. Thought. She mm-hmm. trusts you with her son. Um, did someone have learning difficulties, or was there something about? Um, I, I don't know why I'm feeling this, but I feel like someone might have need a little bit more help. It could be with learning, or could be with like a health thing. Right. Does, is that anything? Is there is there an operation coming? I don't know what I, I could be totally wrong again. Um, but it was it, yeah. Her it, sister had an operation yesterday. Her, oh, get, are you kidding me? Okay, no. so her sister had an operation. Okay, yeah. See, I was I was getting it muddled up because she's talking about so many things in her life. So, oh. um, the and I'm so sorry if I'm taking up too much of your time, but no, I, I'll no. keep going because. But her son because, does um, have a health she, condition, I think. But um, yeah, okay. her sister had an operation yesterday. Not All right, a, well, there's the operation. There's the op- and I think it was a minor one, but there's the operation. 
and I think she'll be okay. The son, I do feel, has some form of condition. I don't know what it is, but it's almost like they just need to get that checked. You know, again, I'm not a medical doctor or anything, and I, I don't know these people from a bar of soap, but, but I, you know, this is my sense. This is what she's giving me. Yeah. And I think that her, being a mother, I suppose that's what she's doing, her motherly care. Yeah. But she just wants you to keep looking over the, the sun. Are you still in communication with her, I don't know, with a partner or boyfriend or yes, husband? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. Let him know. Let him know. Um, uh, look, I don't know if he believes in this stuff. Then again, all these men seem to want to call me these days, but um, oh, not, <laughs> not for any other not for any other reason. Don't get the wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> but, but but you know, <laughs> because they hear this stuff and they go, "Oh my god, that's all true," you know, and then they think, "Oh, there is something to this." So it's not about convincing; it's just about healing, really. So if you just pass on the message and say, "Look, I just spoke to this guy." And he said all these things and just wants you to know that she's doing okay. Um, it just might give him some comfort because he feels very young to me also. Yeah. So it, it might be a little bit of a struggle for him because as a dad, as a partner, you know, it's something you're never prepared for when someone passes like that. And you know what's weird? Even though she had this cancer, what cancer did you say it was? It was breast cancer and then a tumor in the brain. Um, ah, the brain, because that, that's what that's what the head the head was the thing that she says. I think that she fought this till no tomorrow, and she's a fighter, so she just wants her son to be like that as well. I think he's going to be all right, but just um, yeah, just I'll watch check over in. him. Yeah, yeah, just check him. I've just, just realised wow. you, that you've come to me through my Instagram feed, but ultimately <laughs> to help Shezzy because don't you think that's weird? Yeah, yeah. no, well, no, that's, not well in a good way. Yes, in a good way. Yeah, like the fact that all these things happen, the synchronicity behind it, last night thing, last week's thing that you guys did that no one knows about yet. It's all these little you know tidbits that have all joined up, and then I think it was really for the the big kabam, which is me. Yeah. But I think um I think that happens. But Grant, you know what? Back to your obviously grandmother, your grandfather, the Easter thing, the ancestor thing. With this racing thing, because that's actually how this all began. I want you to do something for me. Right. When you get into the car, and I've said this to you on television before, but I'm going to give you more info about it. You need to call upon Archangel Michael to protect you in the vehicle before you go in. So it's almost like visualize the vehicle surrounded with like a bubble of light, any color. For some reason, I see blue, so do a blue one. Uh-huh. A bubble of blue light. Do you like the color blue? Yes. Or is that... Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> if you did, it's too bad. Um, so the, the, blue, the blue light around the car, and just call upon Archangel Michael and say, please, Archangel Michael, protect me in this vehicle and ensure I get to where I need to get to safely. Then, in addition to that, have you ever heard of St. Christopher? Yes. Yes. Somebody, okay. Somebody did, somebody did ever someone give you a cur- Oh, my God. Oh, You're like saying you- what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> somebody <laughs> gave you a little like- medallion with, um, the med- with there you Christopher go. after Keep that. Yeah. Keep that with you because there's a connection with the medallion of St. Christopher that someone has given you that you need to go and find and put that in the vehicle with you because I think, I don't know if you know where it is. No, we don't we'll know where it is. I was just <laughs> thinking the same thing. I was thinking it's packed oh. in a box somewhere because we've only just moved back in. Chevy. Yes. Chevy, this is your job because I, I don't know if Grant will do this, so look for it. Okay. Give it to him. And then, get, Grant, put it in your pocket or leave it in the car with you and that will protect you because that medallion that was given to you was given to you to protect you for the specific purpose of racing. Yes, it was. I remember. <laughs> it was. I'm a freak of nature, aren't I? Can you, I'm a little bit of a freak Can of you nature. guys stop finishing each other's sentences before the rest of us start to think that you guys are dating? <laughs> Hold on. Can, oh, we, you can know. we, this is just totally going off topic here, but um, yeah. Harry, while we've got you, can we just yeah. bring our daughter in who's knocking on the door because it's school oh, holidays? Cool. Hey, sales. She's, um, she wants to be a psychic one day and a healer and she... Um, Sailor. Oh, no, now she's disappeared. Okay, yeah. Do you know what's so weird that you say that? Do animals come to her that are sick? Or do animals, like, does she ever, like, look so, after sick animals? Yes. Wait, what? You know why? Because I just had a vision of her putting her hand on, like, a like a, like a, a pet or a sick animal and they feel better. So she must have natural healing abilities. Yes, you like feel her like you do, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, she's... Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. Oh, that's good. Oh, you're so polite. I love that. Um, <laughs> you know, when when you are around people, do your hands get hot? Um, I had 
actually don't know because I don't really pay attention to it, but they might. They might. Okay, I want you to start doing something for me. When you are either around animals or if if your mum has a sore stomach or anything, because I feel like that might happen, um, put <laughs> your hand on your mum's tummy and just see if she feels better from that. Because I think that your hand gets hot, but it's healing. It's a healing energy. So next time your mum has a sore stomach, put your hand on her tummy and just see if it makes her feel better because I think that you can help her like that. Okay. Okay? Well, you but you're said, very, very... You yeah. have said before, Sailor, that you, you think that you have healing powers, didn't you? Someone else said that. Somebody else said that, but did I they? I didn't say that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember oh. somebody had said that, so it's not... Well, she, she's natural. She's a natural healer. Then. So that's, that's good. You know what? The more, the more healers, the better. I mean, look at the world we live in. The more, the, the more people that, that are healing, I think, is better. Sailor, I think you have a very bright future ahead of you. You're very, very lovely. Oh, do you want to ask Harry a question about your future? How do you know if you're psychic? Yeah, yeah that was. Ask, you say it. You say it. How do you know if you're psychic? You know things about people. You can sense it. You know how sometimes you meet someone and you like them or you don't? <laughs> you, 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 you get a sense of that. And sometimes you can have dreams or you can feel things. Um, but don't be scared of it mm. because it's very, very natural. So just – and you know what I would do, Sally, if I were you? Mm. Always talk to your mummy and daddy about stuff, everything. Tell okay. them everything okay. because it's always good to share things with other people, especially your parents, because then you'll always feel better. Just in case something feels like a little bit scary to you, always talk to them. And they've got my number now, so you can call me anytime. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Mm. She's got she's got crystals all through her room and she did that oh, for wow. from when because she... you didn't buy me any. Oh, <laughs> there's a sledge. Um, That's funny. Yeah. Well, crystals, crystals, crystals in the room are very healing. I mean, it's good to help sleep. Does she have amethyst or rose quartz? Amethyst is purple, yes. rose quartz is pink. Yes, she does. Yep. That's good for her. So that's good to help her sleep and it's good to just help her, like, um, continue being her, really. She's very lovable. Yeah, that, I would have to agree that she is a healer. She certainly mm-hmm. has healed us at various points, hasn't she? Isn't that interesting? And, and what's this thing with your stomach? Why do I see you like like sometimes she needs to like touch your stomach? Do you have something there? Well, There's something like discom- discomfort. Yeah, uh, I was saying. Um, yeah, you do. I was saying yeah the other day to Grant. I think I have to get my cesarean scar looked at because I. How interesting! I've had pain in there for the past couple of months, on and off. So. Yeah, that's weird. Do, look, do me a favor. Get a check the lower stomach area. I think you're okay, but there is something there that's irritating. It could be like something to do with a stitch or a, I don't know. There's just something that's feeling a little bit. You know your body better than anyone. Did you just say so, a, stitch? a stitch? You just said stitch. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, yeah. I don't know what, why I said a stitch. Tell him. Tell him your theory. That you. I can't remember. You can't, your theory is that when I think when when you were packed all back together again after the cesarean, you, you, sort of, yeah. you had a feeling you might have actually been stitched to the bowel or something like oh, that. Oh yes, sorry, yes, yes, yes. Like um, I yeah, like I had adhesions. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, there's there's something, but I think it's very easily dealt with, so it's not going to cause like a problem for you or anything. Um, but I think you're going to be okay. You know what, um, Grant, you've got to deal with Archangel Michael and St. Christopher. Yep. And um, uh, Chesney, uh, sorry. Yes. Um, you, need to, you need to deal with Archangel Raphael because that's the healing Archangel. And because you're the mum and the, you know, the, I suppose the, um, the, boss. Feminine, the feminine aspect <laughs> of the family, um, you come in with a lot of responsibility with that. You know, you're, you're the wife, you're the mum, you do a lot. Sometimes yes. I think, um, you know, mothers get really a short lap because there's so much more. You've got, like, so many jobs. So um, Archangel Raphael uh, will help you to do your nurturing job, which you do beautifully. I love you two as a couple. I think you're fabulous. I think that the two of you together, are, you were meant to be, you were destined. Um, and I think, you know, that your children will be reflections of you. Oh. Good, good people. Oh. Harry T, Harry. can I just That's say a, that this is I think, everything that <laughs> Chezzy needed right at the moment she needed it. And although you came through me, I think the whole intention was for you to talk to her. Um, so Isn't thank that amazing? You. you are so welcome. Thank you so much for having me, hey, guys. I what, really, really How can it. people find you if they want? Can you give yourself a plug? How can they find of you course. if they want to follow up with of you? Course. 
I always forget to plug myself. Okay, so if you want to if you want, if you want to find me, um, you can go to my website harrytofficial dot com, and um, I've got lots of exciting things coming. Out. I've got a book coming out soon, guys. I'm really excited. So um, maybe when that comes out, I'd love to come on. Actually, that'd be yes. awesome. Yes. Harrytofficial dot com, my friend. It amazing. was an absolute pleasure, and thank you for feeling me full of confidence to go do the thing that I am deeply passionate about. That's, that's you'll be yeah, fine. That's awesome. Oh, before you'll you be go, um, mm. will George get a girlfriend? <laughs> Uh, you know, what lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor George. Thanks, well, Harry T. For the next. See you, Harry. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Oh, Thank you so much. <laughs> See you, buddy. Bye. Bye. I just had to finish on that awesome sledge from Harry T to oh, you, George, about your love life. He was, uh, In what lifetime? <laughs> Beautiful work. <laughs> George was like really hoping for an answer and we kind of cut him off, but um, I wasn't expecting I to need... speak to him for so long. Oh, and that I was, was like, amazing. Oh, that was, like, I'm blown away and now I've like. My mouth was open the entire time, like, <gasps> holy sh- smokes. I think we've I just know. changed the direction of this podcast forever. Maybe we're just going to do medium shit <laughs> from now on because this stuff, I'm converted, I'm a believer, I'm oh, all in. This is it, insane. But how do you explain. The, to the non believe it, well, stuff it. If you don't believe, like, we, uh, I'm really shaky because I was not expecting that. But um, I don't even know Harry T. Like, I didn't even know him. I remember seeing him on TV when, um, when you did that segment. I think I'd, I'd seen him on maybe the Channel 10 breakfast show, uh, Studio 10, and I was like, geez, this guy's, this guy's pretty sweet. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then, I, and then when Husey, you know, got me on his show. Um, I think that it started with Ed Cavalier was w- didn't want me to go motor racing because we we're doing a breakfast TV show together because he had oh, a dream yeah. I was going to like die or something or have an accident. Oh, God. So then we wanted to get to the bottom of it, and you know Harry T said, "No, no, 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 you're good." But that whole imagine a blue light and Archangel Michael uh, ask for yep. the protection before we get into the car. I'll, and you know I'll what? Use that. So every. We're not hugely psychic, even though that does seem like These last we, we two need podcasts to be. might prove differently. Um, we're, maybe <laughs> we need to work on genre. that. Yeah. <laughs> so I've decided to become a psychic. Um, no, so we, we for the past oh, eight years, we've been seeing our um, regular psychic, Flavia, um, and we will probably chat to her next week. No, we'll <laughs> chat to her in a little bit. Um, and we kind of, we've been blown away with the stuff that she kind of tells us, uh, you know, what's what's kind of coming up. And She's basically mapped out our life, like, and everything's landed exactly how she saw, said it would, it would but land. But it's weird because when she tells us, like she does a tarot reading and so she'll lay all the cards out and she'll just rattle off all this stuff and often it doesn't make sense at the time. It's not until, you know, six to 12 months later that something happens and then we're completely blown away. So it's... um. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. So but you you would you wouldn't have been into this sort of gear beforehand, would you, George? Like, how do you feel now after two podcasts? Unintentionally, we've just done two podcasts on this. By that the way. was not meant to. I've got like a full <laughs> set of notes here about what I want to talk about how today. Do, how do you feel about it all? I used to YouTube uh, that psychic John Edwards. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, big yeah. over in the states. Yeah. yeah, and he did stuff out in Australia as well. Still does, and I really was sort of captivated by that. But now, actually having a proper experience, that sort of happening right in front of my very own eyes mm. and ears, I'm I'm converted. I'm a bit of a believer now of psychics. I might have to actually go and <laughs> get a reading. Yeah, well, good on you. You should too. You know what? I, I look at it this way. We right? should have we should have let him finish. Yeah, we maybe could we have should had, have yeah. I, I had a feeling. He he wasn't getting a vibe, so I didn't want to make him. Like, oh, right. He did done such great work, and because maybe he might have exhausted all of his psychic skills on us, and he didn't. I didn't feel like he was getting anything. Picking. I'm a up tough from, one to crack. Yeah, I think that's, and I didn't want to finish. Well, you on that were note. worried that it, that he actually couldn't see a girlfriend for George this year. And I didn't want him to cry on this podcast. <laughs> like oh, I want him to work George. up to it. Season four. Maybe for sure. he could see a wife. <laughs> maybe he just goes straight to wife. Maybe Harry T didn't see a girlfriend because I think Harry T might have seen other options. I don't know. Like what? Harry T was saying all the boys are, you know, calling him, but not for that reason. <laughs> I reckon maybe he's got a sixth sense. I don't know. You're in the arts community, George. Oh. Don't rule it out, brother. Maybe he There's saw. There's no judgment here. Maybe he saw George's blow up dolls and he wasn't quite sure how to navigate. Well, people do marry objects, so that could quite oh, possibly that, have be someone, seen that. Someone married you, themselves. You know what I've never asked, George? I've never asked this question in three seasons of the podcast. Are you ready Go for this? Go for it. I'm ready. I've never asked if your blob dolls are male or female. 
The name yeah. was Sherry. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Blow up doll Sherry. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, definitely female. Awfully close to my wife's name, Little Orkies. Oh. Considering how close we are careful. now. Sherry is not my name. Um, What's your mum's name again? My mum's name is Lisa. Yeah, that's what I'm naming my blob doll. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, you are in so wow. much. Oh, that on my lip. Um, if you're going with Cherie, that's what I'm doing. Look, now that... Sounds fair. What's your dad's name? Get, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my blob doll. That's Hello. family of blob dolls. Yeah, it's Glenn. Thank you. How oh, nice. Um, yeah, Glenn, you yeah. remembered. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm psychic. Um, <laughs> so now that dancing's over, what I wanted to talk about, because oh. I think that if we don't do this... Uh, and the season finishes that um, that then we you know we will have missed the opportunity and seeing as this podcast is called it's all true um, I think we need, I want to talk about you know what happened with um, our win with a magazine because um, oh. it was a really big thing in our lives so do you remember, oh, all right so you're talking about when we on, appeared on the cover of a women's magazine who yes let's not name because nope. Let's not give them any extra attention. No, no, we don't need to name um, it. For during the dancing period, they took a photo of me and my dance partner and made a shocking and absolutely falsified accusation that. Uh, well, how do you put it? Well, it was front page, and it um, there was a photo of Grant with his dancer Lily, and it looked like he was holding her thigh, and the headline was Grant caught out with a big circle around um, the hand on the leg. So making out like Grant was having an affair with Lily um, and it was front page. It was a massive big, like, big deal. Yeah, it was shocking. At the time. It was like, like so unbelievable. Um, like we were just, the real circumstances are, um, we were just sitting outside a cafe waiting for our, our meal to be made. And we'd just been on the phone with you. Yeah. Lily, me, and, and Shezzy just sort of chatting. FaceTiming. Yeah. It's, we're talking about how hard, you know, it's going and you it just was had a, you'd, you'd had a, a, a bad judgment, I think, two nights before yeah. at filming. And you both were feeling really flat because you, you thought that it was your strongest dance. And it, um, when you came out and you performed it, they said it was good, but they kind of slammed the, sl- the technique. They slammed it, yeah. They slammed her choreography. So, which, you know, if you do that to a professional dancer, that is as bad as it gets. So she was really knocked around. Her confidence just went through the floor. But not only that, she was also in the middle of like, you know, some relationship issues. So she had a, a lot. She, she was had juggling a lot going on. on. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they were, they were, Trying their hardest to win this competition, and they were they're both extremely competitive and um and that our chat you know right before those photos were taken, I remember you did say to me that the photographer had been hanging around the studio, which we already knew because this particular photographer is a serial pest in our life and has been a bit of a pest over the years um and it was only a week earlier when you guys were at rehearsals. He took photos of Lily with her boyfriend, mm. and that story that you were the third well, wheel, sort of, ex, sort of ex-boyfriend reconnecting, sort of yeah. That this is the relationship issues that we're talking right, about, the okay. on and off again, boy. Yeah, right. But somebody that she was very close with, and yeah. she was very excited to see, and so he got photos outside the studio. She had her legs wrapped around him, and Grant was walking behind, like um, you know, the third wheel. So that came out the week before, and this particular photographer had tagged us in his um, release of those photos, and then actually sent through a message to me on Instagram saying, um, you know, it was a good shot of Lily with a boyfriend. Um, at least they, uh, you know, didn't get the photo that they really wanted, um, you know, making out like there was some kind of affair happening. Because they do you know, it to With a smiley face. At some point. Uh, every, every season happens Every to season. Um, so... During our FaceTime chat, Grant had said, you know, that this particular photographer was hanging around and, you know, and we're kind of used to it. It's annoying, um, but it is, you know, something that we have become 
kind of accustomed to. It's sort of part of the game we're in, you know, whether you like it or not, it's 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 part of the industry of which I have chosen. So um so yeah, so he followed them and and he's taken, you know, what looks quite sinister on the front um cover. However, when you put the photos into context and there was a lot of photos that were taken, you can actually and I've seen, you know, all the photos. Um, you and in sequence, you can definitely tell that it's a very friendly pat on the leg. And so I guess the we got a message from the photographer saying that he was really sorry because he knew that this was coming out and they were going to go big with it. And, you know, whilst we're not friends, I still looked at that and thought, oh, here we go. We're going to have, you know, some fun this week. It's not the first time that you know, shit like this has been made up and, and um, but this particular one was pretty savage, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like, yeah, it's embarrassing. Like it's embarrassing and it's, it made you so angry because you're like, mate, we're sitting there having a chat with my wife. We get off the phone, I tap her on the leg, not even looking at her face. I'm looking down the street and I go, everything's just going to be okay. Give her a tap on the leg while we're sitting on this window ledge waiting for our food. And then they make out like we were, I was holding her leg. Um, And like when you look at the original photos, George, you can actually tell that some of the shadowing, you know, had been removed. But anyway, we won't go into editorial tricks. Um, So that it did look like the hand was, you know, more placed on the thigh. Um, It was a really dodgy, sneaky dog move. And it came... Because it was completely fabricated. And it came... It came after a series of, you know, these kinds of attacks and headlines and and I think we just kind of, we were frustrated and we also, we're kind of, we, we're people pleasers. So when it's affecting just us, it's not as, I feel like we can wear it a little bit more. But this was attacking Lily who, you know, she'd given up her life in Queensland and she's studying and she's doing environmental science, you know, to come to Bathurst in the middle of winter to train Grant. Um, so to put a uni on pause, she's 22. She put a whole life on pause, like, like on, on yeah, hold. Yeah, friendships behind and... And it's COVID and it's hard, you know, it's extremely lonely for a couple of months to come to Bathurst and and I absolutely adored her. We took her in and, you know, I was I was really upset that they had thrown a pot shot and at that's, her. And that's where it's one of those – look, we've spoken a, a little bit about this before – but it's it's one of those things where you go, all right, you know, throw throw stones at me because I signed up to the TV game, and maybe that's part of the collateral damage that comes with doing this sort of job. But when you when you start to see innocent victims get sort of knocked down and their lives destroyed by it, and accusations at their home wrecker, she did not sign up for that. She doesn't no. deserve that. She's bloody paid to teach me how to put one foot in front of the other, not for this sort of shit. And that's and that's when we were like, you know what? We've been pushed around by these bastards for way too long. You know, screw them. You know, who gives them the right to get away with this shit scot-free? So we were, stuff them, you know? Yeah. Fuck them. Let's take them on. And we were too afraid to do that in the past. And it's very expensive to do. It's a, And very hard to win. But Nobody we- had ever... The, the reason why this was such big news was because... Nobody up until Rebel Wilson a few years back had ever successfully taken on these magazines. So you just had to cop it. Well, even she kind of lost on appeal. Well, that's true. And so uh, we can't really talk too much about, you know, the legal goings on. No, but Um, ultimately we got what we wanted, which was an apology. Yes. Um, Them acknowledging it was a full-blown, completely made-up fabricated story yep. of which they created only for the purposes of, of stirring attention and selling magazines. So they made that full admission yep. in their words, in their own magazine, and we got them to stop. Yeah, which was great. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, well, probably not, but hopefully, you know, for the next little while, we won't be attacked. Um, well, there's no, guarantees. There's no guarantees. There's no guarantees. There's no guarantees. But, you know, uh, we're not afraid now and we've set a precedence. And and it's good because we had so many celebrities and people in the media contact us after the win and they were 
just they they rattled off you know everything that had happened to them and and the stories that had been written about them that were fake and they didn't know you know and then they'd never kind of had the confidence because these magazines um never get held to account and they can say basically whatever they want if they get a photograph of you looking really angry they can say you know any storyline that goes with that photograph so um they can say sacked from his job as game show well, host or what relationships broken down. They can write whatever they want they because can, when it yeah. comes, the official ruling is by the governing body who looks after media in these magazines says that if providing it's the it's celebrities or the royals, then they can make up anything whatsoever. Yeah, so, and there is no comeback for any of us. So all they do, they they say that they have a source. It's completely fabricated. Um, and because they don't have to disclose who that source under is. under the journalism code, you don't have to declare your sources because for good journalism, of course, you need good sources to leak information that does a create a, a, a greater good for, you know, the world. You know, good yeah. journalism digs deep and you need people to leak secrets to you so you can get to the bottom of, you know, really important issues. But they use that loophole um, yeah. to pull this shit. Yeah. So... George, let me just rattle off just some of the headlines, okay, and the front pages yeah. that we've had over the past few years, and you tell me what you think they they are, okay? Sure. Um, Grant Denyer's shock split. They took away my pants. <laughs> Hearing that, yeah, <laughs> that deep down might be the actual story. Yeah, but I mean, actually. people reading that, they go, "Oh, what's going on between you and Chez? Exactly. Right. So it was Grant is feuding with people on set, which. Uh, we don't even know what set that was, and it was totally fabricated. That was in 2018. It was a family feud set. Yeah. So. Oh, there he is. Did you work for them? No. Um, <laughs> God, no. Denya's spending more time apart. What well, sounds I mean, like we're spending, like, we're living apart. What do you want us apart. to do? What's our challenge? I here? want you to guess what that headline is. Oh, Denya's spending more time apart. It would suggest that we're on, we're on a break. Yeah. We're on a relationship break. It was a false headline, but the story was about Mummy Time TV and how I'm working a lot more, which was actually quite nice. So the uh, front page, okay. yeah. So said I was just that saying we, that you're now you got some work and you're playing with this wonderful project called Mummy Time Television. So yes. therefore, their conclusion is that our that relationship's spending, on the rocks. Yes, that's right. Like, okay. So this wow. is what people see. The biggest clickbait ever. This is what people see, right? And a lot of these people who buy these magazines don't have Facebook, don't have Instagram, so they don't know the true stories, but they see this when they go shopping. Okay, so they're at the checkout and they think, oh, my God, Grant Denyer, what a drama queen. He is on the front cover every week. Yeah, yes. not, yeah clearly not by choice. No. Like far out. Which is, why, which is why this big win with this magazine was so important to us. Here's a few more. Grant and Shezzy twin surprise. Well, that was Oh, about the we're having- win that you were having. No, the twi- twin surprise. It, so yeah. it either suggests that, uh, that that we're having twin children or your boobs had popped out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Grant Takes Home, the Logie and the Accra Award for New Talent. Wow, so nothing to do with twin children. Nothing. Oh, my gosh. Shezzy's Fall Off the Wagon. Wow. Oh, this one sounds... That probably close to home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, suggesting that you're pissed as a, a, a newt every night, and well, suggesting that maybe I'm an alcoholic and yeah, I've had DUI. a fall off the. Yeah, you've just done DUI, right? Well, it was Shezzy tells her followers she's given up coffee. <laughs> oh, that's what man. the story off was. Off the wagon. Off the wagon. Right. Stopping what coffee. About shock. Grant Dania picks. Oh, wow. Now this, this We've all received some of those <laughs> on our phone. <laughs> this was a 1 com- a.m. This was accompanying a photo of Grant with his eyes rolling back into his head. Okay, so it looked... Oh, I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah. so it looked pretty bad. It, the, the photo was actually taken from a video that he posted on his Instagram and they'd taken it mid, mid-frame. So it looked like your eyes were... Rolling yeah. like, like we like you take a photo mid frame of all of us, we'd look pretty yeah, stoned that's right. or something. If you got half a blink going on, you look stoned. Yeah, well, you just you just looked a bit odd. Yeah, so um, was that the one from Vegas? Was, no, no. It says sub. Yeah, so the sublines in this story were claiming that you were having a breakdown, and and the fans were f- fearing for your mental health. Wow, just because I was caught mid mid, mid glare, yeah. mid mid blink, mid blink. 
Um, Grant Denyer collapses. Wow. It's dramatic. Looks like yeah. he's in trouble again. 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 Um, that was a photo of you sitting on the lounge in the Rex Lounge. Do you remember that? Ugh. After we came back from Bali and we all got the Bali bloody belly. Bali belly. I was really, really crook. And Grant was so unwell and he went to Sydney and, and probably, you probably shouldn't have gone. I went to we work because yeah. we had to film like a stack of Family Feud episodes. And I was so, so sick from Bali belly having just landed and then went to work and they went like, uh, bro, <laughs> not that colour, you're not going to work. Yeah. You are oh. ill. And so they sent me back home, jumped on the Rex flight, the little regional flight, and I'm lying on the couch, green to the gills. Yeah, feeling really terrible. And this photographer, who, if he keeps it up, I'm going to get an AVO out on him. Um, that's not a joke. That's not a joke, yeah, because he's a, he's a pest. He just follows our Instagram to see where we are and then we'll just turn up. So we, um, we always post where we are after, after we've, we've left. left. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was, you know, he just appeared in the Rex Lounge and was taking photos of Grant and that appeared on the front cover saying that it uh, looks like he's in trouble again. Yeah, he would have been in trouble. I would have shat on him if I saw him <laughs> take that photo. <laughs> and the it wasn't a price to pay. The old human poo cannon. It wasn't even a big surprise because you were telling everyone on your socials like that you couldn't work because you were so sick and there was a whole heap of people who got it that we flew with on the plane yeah. who all had it. We thought we might have got it on the plane like... Yeah, yeah well, we or still in the lounge do. when we left. We still do yep. think. Um, fears for Grant. Oh. Is that it? Yeah, that was the headline. Photo of Grant carrying his own bag at the airport. <laughs> 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 do you remember that? Service? <laughs> Who's carrying my luggage? No, they were saying that um, it was a beat up about how Grant wasn't protecting his back because his bag looked heavy. Do you remember that? Oh, no. that's after I, that's right. When I was in the paddock and I was using a sledgehammer to knock in a star picket and into the ground on the farm and yeah. I, I ripped my disc. Um, so I, went, I, I was really sore. Yeah. Um, and they got me coming back from filming. I continued to film. Like, yeah. Like I'm, I was working and then they got me, I was the only one at the, uh, again, a regional airline. I was the only one at the carousel. And so I'm, there's, I'm getting my own bag off there naturally because, you know, I don't have servants. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Um, and then he gets a photo going, you know, claiming that I must be some kind of liar about my injury because I'm lifting my own bag like, off tiny, the carousel. tiny bag. Yeah. So well, what do you want me to do, bro? Um. I'll keep going. There's a few more oh, here. Jesus Christ. This is just in the last two, three years. Like, and we're, we're not going to have time today to talk about, you know, before that. But it's um, making me depressed. You don't need to be depressed. It's funny. It's too late. Public meltdown. There was a shot taken of me looking very cranky at Derby Day. Well, it's not. I've got a really bad resting bitch face. No, you were pissed. That's what it was. Oh, right. <laughs> I had one too many champagnes. Uh, holding Grant's sandwich while he went to the toilet. <laughs> And so the story was that Shezzy was unhappy because of Grant's drinking. I <laughs> held your sandwich while you went to the toilet and the whole story was Shezzy unhappy with Grant's Conce drinking. Concerned about my drinking. They really There was no drink, for starters. You're holding my sandwich. They really want like. to like to They want people to have a mental breakdown. They want they they're not happy until they see a star fallen so far that they, they never work again. And oh, in this day and age, so angry. it's very easy for that to happen. This shit sticks, right? It Even does. though it's made up, you can ruin someone's career to the point where they won't they won't ever work again. Because if enough of this stuff goes around, well, then people don't want to employ you because you're seen to be a little bit, I don't know, troubled or a bit risky. Yeah. You're a bit risky. Like the, the magazines aren't in love with you. Um, and we – and look, the day's – aren't really around anymore where you need these magazines for your TV show to be successful, but you you certainly can't have enemies because you need people to watch your show. So I could – literally my career is at risk the more they write. And the, and that has none of them are true. It has nothing to do with me. They're completely made up. They've admitted that, but the damage can still be real. Yeah. It sounds like a really broad question, but how do you deal with those – toxic headlines that are d just not true like how do you how do you deal with it how do you get through um it's a bit it's I, I i look up until the one from last year we kind of i think we really just probably laughed just at it a bit just tried to ignore them really um 
you know, it's so it's not much you can do. Well, that's that is the thing. But too. Uh, living in a small community, I feel like a lot of these magazines have an impact on the people that I have to see every day. You know, whether it be um, you know, the school pickup or the, down the shops or whatever. I feel like, I to be honest, I look at every person and go, I wonder if they've read that story and I wonder if they believe it. I wonder if they think I'm a really shit person. Um, so that's that's not Whereas, a great way to live. No, that's not a good way to live, and it's not fair. But we have started fighting back in you know in the last two years and just basically setting the story straight because that is something mm. that you know once upon a time we were too scared to do, and um, we didn't want to waste the energy in going into someone's negative negativity to just a justify that we're right and they're wrong. We didn't want to burn that kind of energy. But like I'm But I, now we're these like, articles and these headlines, this is just as I said from the last few years, right? Grant Denya, the son I've always wanted. Now this had a TV ad for this front page and I was not pregnant. Thank you. The son I've always wanted. Yeah, Grant Denya, front page. I've got the, the son, son I've always son wanted. I've wa- George. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> then, then there was another one claiming, and we were pregnant this time, that um, the baby was a boy, but they used photos of Sailor when she was born. Oh, you know I that? remember that. Yes. From nine years earlier. <laughs> Beach bust up. Oh, this one really pissed me off. Um, Grant and Shezzy fight in front of shocked fans. Was this when we were on the jet ski? Yeah, so Grant made me bloody... I just had like half a bottle of rosé with my girlfriend on the beach. And Christmas holidays. Yeah, Christmas holidays, having a great time at like a random quiet beach up near Ballina. And Grant said, can you hop on the back of the jet ski and you be know, the spotter for the kids because we'd put them on the biscuit behind the jet ski and tying them around and giving them a great time. So and I was like, one's oh. got a, I face forward driving and she faces backwards to observe the kids because that's what legally you have to do. Yeah. So they and take I'm a looking, look and roll. I'm looking into the sun. Right, so squinting and looking shirty. Plus, also, I've had a couple of glasses of rosé with my girlfriend. So a I'm, couple. I'm really not wanting to. There's be a theme here, Shezzy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm starting the <laughs> magazines. They're true. Um, and and also the the wetsuit, the um, what is that? The life, life jacket, jacket that Grant gave me was extremely tight and was cutting off my circulation. So all the photos that they got, I do look pretty pissed off um, or in your worst light yeah. yeah and the whole story was saying that we uh, that that's i wouldn't that. even face grant on saying the jet we're ski. having a fight because we're facing different directions on the jet ski yeah <laughs> like but people who know this stuff that know that there's going to be a spotter behind and people who are just genuine generally switched on no but they didn't show is... anyone on the biscuit behind no. us right so they cut that out so it just looks like you're looking at two Bastards. people facing back to back on a jet ski yeah. and they've written you know, the fight, relationship's over, the shocked onlookers. And you yeah. go, no, nah, mate, we're pulling the kids. There was like, yeah. n- there was nobody else on the beach for starters. And Surely then they- that form of journalism can just be, like there can be some kind of law in place to just like make that not happen because it's it's damaging. It's- uh, wow. Mate, no, like I said, like the, 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 the body that looks after that form of journalism. The press council. Press council is okay with celebrities and the royals having completely made up stories. Because they, so wrong. Unproven they... Unproven is fine with them. They basically think that if you believe something in one of these magazines, then fool you because it's... Not real. Fun, funnily enough, who do you think sits on like the board of the press council? It's all the magazine heads. Yeah. So like as if they're going to write a rule against, against their own business model. Um, look, it's ridiculous and it's Why have we annoying. been talking about this? And it's because I've just, I wanted to put it on the record. What? That magazines can go suck a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> what about Grant Denier's Fury, Larry Stole My Show? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's got a book coming out. Are you going to write a book? I, I just saw that. Yeah, that's exciting for Laz. I don't know if I could write a book. It's, it's, I reckon that's a big process. That is a big process. Yeah. We've got some stories to tell. Well, hang oh, on. We've got an audio book, mate. What do you think we're doing yeah. right now, you lunatic? Very true. Do you want me to like transcribe every episode? You just go and type oh up every God. single episode. That's and then, thing. Yeah, you can be my ghost writer. I'll um, sell it. Look, we've probably run out of time now and I really I had a lot more that I wanted to say, but that was a was a really powerful start. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that were yeah, again, an episode that went in completely different directions yep. to where we thought it was gonna go. Yep. But anyway, that's the way it you know, the cookie crumbles.
I think I'll officially move us into like a psychic or medium yeah. category from now on. Does that sound okay? Well, we could wow. be Australia's number one psychic podcast after the last two episodes. Look, like I said, uh, if that wasn't your cup of tea, do apologize. Um, to do two of those back to back, that's not normally how we go. But clearly, someone, someone was wanted to come to... in and yeah. someone needed to tell us something. And that's, you would have to agree, you needed to hear that. I didn't realize that I did, but I think that was pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. That was nice. Was really, nice. really nice. Look, look, the universe works in strange and mysterious ways. It uh, does. We don't fight it. We just go with it. Hey, there's a life lesson. Yeah. That's very profound, isn't it? Thank you. Uh, Would you like some rosé? <laughs> I don't even like rosé. Yes, so please. Thank you. Do you want to hop on the back of my jet ski? Oh. You angry bitch. <laughs> See, that's the thing. When you see other celebrities and the paparazzi pop out, this is our downfall. When you, when the paparazzi or the, the photographers, uh, they take a photo of you and everybody else has this big smile and polished look. There's Grant and Shares like, huh? Huh? like fully caught off guard looking like twits. Like and then dopes. Yeah, or we look angry or we look, you know, even our concentration face looks angry and that's the reason why. Yeah, you know what I've learned about all of this? What? I'm just going to take George with me everywhere so he can just <laughs> carry my luggage. <laughs> so, I, so I never get a story written about me again. I'd be like, up for that role, mate. Absolutely. How much am I getting paid for this one? Uh, I'll give you a nice firm handshake and maybe a sandwich, which you have to hold <laughs> when I go to the toilet. <laughs> and I'll make sure I'm not glaring. I'll smile while you do that. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Oh. Good stuff, brother. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening. We'll chat Be to you next true. time. Be true. Woo. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I'm out. That last one hurt. Oh. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shezzy Denya. Bye-bye. See you next time.